Welcome to Time Forge Stories. In part one, we revealed that ancient Filipinos were building ocean-going vessels 40,000 years before Vikings existed. That video sparked thousands of comments asking the same question. Today, we answer that question, not with opinions, with engineering, with physics, with modern reconstructions. By the end of this video, you'll understand why modern racing boats use Filipino outrigger technology. While nobody builds Viking-style ships anymore except for museums, we'll compare hull construction, stability systems, sailing capability, durability, navigation, and the engineering will prove that 40,000 years of refinement creates technology that's superior in almost every measurable way. This is Time Forge Stories, where forgotten history comes to light. Let's begin. You watched the first video. You learned that ancient Filipinos were building ocean-going vessels 40,000 years before Vikings existed. And a lot of you asked the same question. Okay, but were Filipino ships actually better than Viking longships? That's what we're answering today. Not with theories or speculation, with hard engineering comparisons, historical records, and modern reconstructions that prove Filipino maritime technology was more sophisticated than Viking technology in almost every measurable way. This isn't Vikings part two. This is the engineering breakdown that explains why Filipino ships dominated the Pacific for thousands of years, while Viking ships lasted 300 years and then disappeared. Let me show you why Filipino maritime engineering represents one of humanity's greatest technological achievements and why Viking longships, impressive as they were, were actually less advanced than boats Filipinos had been perfecting for millennia. First, let's establish what we're comparing. Viking longships reached their peak around 800 to 1100 CE. The iconic dragon ships that raided Europe, crossed the Atlantic and terrorized coastlines. They were fast, versatile, shallow drafted vessels that could navigate rivers and oceans. They're legendary for good reason. Our goal on this video is to get 500 likes and subscribe. Click on bell and turn on notifications. Filipino boats, specifically Balangay and Bangka designs, represent a maritime tradition going back tens of thousands of years. By the time Vikings were perfecting longships, Filipinos had been building and refining ocean-going vessels for longer than recorded history exists. That timeline matters because engineering is iterative. Every generation of boat builders learns from the previous generation, makes improvements, adapts to challenges. Viking shipbuilding had maybe 2,000 years of development. Building on Mediterranean and Northern European traditions, Filipino shipbuilding had 40,000 years. That's 20 times longer, 20 times more generations of refinement, 20 times more accumulated knowledge. So when we compare Viking longships to Filipino vessels, we're not comparing equivalent technologies. We're comparing a refined medieval design to an ancient technology that had been optimized over tens of thousands of years. Let's start with the most fundamental comparison, hull construction. How you build the hull determines everything else about the boat. Its strength, flexibility, durability, and seaworthiness. Viking longships used clinker construction. Overlapping planks fastened with iron rivets the planks overlap like roof shingles, creating a strong, flexible hull. It's brilliant engineering. The overlapping planks allow the hull to flex with waves rather than fighting them. The iron rivets hold everything together while permitting some movement. This construction method was perfect for Northern European conditions. It created lightweight, fast ships that could handle rough North Atlantic seas. It allowed Vikings to build ships quickly with the materials and tools available to them. Filipino vessels used sewn plank or lashed construction. 
wooden planks edge-joined and lashed together with plant fiber rope. Dowels or pegs held planks in alignment. No metal fasteners. The entire hull held together with precisely fitted wood and incredibly strong cordage. At first glance, that sounds primitive. Rope instead of iron, how could that possibly be stronger or better? But here's what modern naval architects discovered when they analyzed this construction method. It's actually superior for tropical maritime conditions. Wood expands and contracts with temperature and humidity changes. In cold northern climates, this isn't a major issue. But in tropical conditions with high heat and humidity, wood movement is significant. Iron-fastened construction becomes rigid. The wood wants to move, but the metal holds it in place. This creates stress points that can lead to cracking and hull failure. Lashed construction flexes with the wood. As planks expand and contract, the lashings accommodate that movement. The hull stays flexible and resilient. This makes sewn plank construction more durable in tropical conditions than metal fastened hulls. Modern boat builders who've studied and reconstructed Filipino vessels consistently report being shocked at how well this construction method works. The boats are lighter, more flexible, and more seaworthy than they expected. Now let's talk about the most revolutionary aspect of Filipino boat design, the outrigger. Viking longships were single-hulled vessels. All the buoyancy and stability came from the hull shape itself. They achieved stability through hull design, wider at the waterline, specific curves and contours. It worked well enough for their purposes. Filipino vessels used outrigger technology. A secondary float, the outrigger, attached to the main hull by lateral supports. This created a dual hull stability system that's fundamentally more stable than any single hull design. The physics are straightforward. A single hull can capsize if tilted past a certain angle. The outrigger prevents that. Even if you push the main hull completely underwater on one side, the outrigger on the other side provides enough buoyancy to right the vessel. It's almost impossible to capsize an outrigger canoe. This isn't just theory. Modern sailors who've tested traditional outrigger designs against single hull boats in rough seas consistently report that outriggers are dramatically more stable. You can stand on the edge of an outrigger and it won't flip. Try that on a single hull canoe and you're swimming. Viking longships were good in rough seas because of their hull flexibility and shallow draft, but they could capsize. Historical records mention Viking ships capsizing in storms. It wasn't common, but it happened. There are essentially no historical records of traditional outrigger vessels capsizing in open ocean. The design simply doesn't allow it under normal conditions. Modern racing sailboats use multi-hull designs, catamarans and trimarans, specifically because they're faster and more stable than single-hull designs. Those modern racing designs are direct descendants of Pacific Island outrigger technology. Filipinos invented this thousands of years ago. Europeans only adopted it in the 20th century. Let's talk about sailing capability. Viking longships had a single square sail. This was effective for sailing with the wind, but less effective for sailing into or across the wind. Vikings could sail downwind efficiently. For other directions, they relied heavily on oars. The longship was designed to be versatile. Sail when conditions were favorable, row when they weren't. This made Vikings independent of wind conditions which was tactically valuable for raiding. They weren't dependent on favorable winds to attack or escape. Filipino vessels used various sail configurations depending on the specific boat and region. Many used crab claw sails, distinctive triangular sails that could be adjusted to catch wind from multiple directions. This allowed effective sailing at many different angles to the wind. The crab claw sail is actually more sophisticated than the Viking square sail. 
It performs better sailing upwind and crosswind. It can be adjusted more precisely to optimize for different wind conditions. It represents more advanced understanding of aerodynamics and sail mechanics. But here's what really matters. Filipino vessels were designed for long-distance ocean voyaging. They needed to sail efficiently in all conditions because they might be at sea for weeks crossing vast distances. Vikings were primarily coastal sailors. Their longest voyages were measured in days, not weeks. This difference in design purpose shows in the sailing performance. Filipino vessels were optimized for sustained ocean voyaging. Viking ships were optimized for coastal raiding and short-term expeditions. Now let's discuss durability and maintenance. Viking longships were built for northern climates, oak planks, iron rivets, tar caulking. These materials performed well in cold, dry conditions, but they had significant maintenance requirements. Iron rivets corrode, especially in salt water. Vikings had to regularly inspect and replace corroded fasteners. The tar caulking needed frequent reapplication. Wooden hulls had to be scraped clean of marine growth and resealed. This required bringing ships ashore periodically for maintenance. Filipino vessels used plant-based materials throughout. Wooden hull, plant fiber lashings, natural resins for waterproofing. In tropical climates, these materials actually perform better than metal and tar. Plant fiber rope doesn't corrode, it can rot if not maintained, but proper rope made from specific plants and properly treated lasts for years, even in constant saltwater exposure. The lashings could be inspected and replaced as needed without major disassembly. Natural resin waterproofing derived from tree sap formed flexible, durable seals that moved with the wood. Unlike tar, which cracks as wood flexes, these natural resins remained flexible. The result was boats that required less frequent major maintenance and could be repaired at sea using materials that were readily available. If a Viking longship's iron rivets failed at sea, you couldn't fix it properly without a forge. If a Filipino vessel's lashings needed repair, you could replace them with spare cordage carried on board. Let's talk about cargo capacity and passenger capacity. Viking longships were relatively narrow with shallow hulls. This made them fast, but limited their cargo capacity. A typical Viking longship might carry 30 to 60 men, plus limited supplies and cargo. They weren't designed as cargo vessels primarily. They were designed as raid vessels. Get in fast, attack, load plunder, get out fast. Speed and maneuverability mattered more than cargo capacity. Filipino vessels came in many sizes and types, but the larger balangay could carry substantial cargo and passengers. Some were large enough to carry trade goods, provisions, and crew for extended voyages. These weren't just raid vessels, they were trading ships, exploration vessels, and migration craft. Archaeological and historical records show Filipino vessels regularly carrying enough people and supplies for long-distance colonization voyages. When Austronesian peoples spread across the Pacific, they carried families, food, plants, animals, and tools. That requires significant cargo capacity. Now let's examine actual historical performance. Viking longships dominated coastal raiding in northern Europe from roughly 800 to 1100 CE, 300 years. They allowed Vikings to expand from Scandinavia to Iceland, Greenland, and briefly North America. They raided throughout Europe. They established trading routes and settlements. Comment Viking for next part.